Whiskey investment has become quite a high-profile topic over the last 10 years or so. And this can be broken down into two main sort of categories. The first is people who are collecting old and rare bottles of whiskey with the hope that the price will go up. These tend to be bottles from very, very well-known distilleries. Macallan are probably the most famous. And secondly, from very limited releases. So if you look at, there was a Peter Blake Macallan released back in the 1980s, and they've become extremely valuable because there are a very, very finite number of them released. And obviously Macallan is so well known, as is Peter Blake, the artist. So that side of the industry has exploded. There's a very much touted Knight Frank report that came out a few years ago that basically mentioned that the top thousand bottles, I think, had accrued in value 564% between 2011 and 2021. Now, a lot of people have made a lot of money out of the bottle side, but as I say, that's a bit, that's really focused on that very, very high end. The main drivers for the, the price point change here one of them is that whiskey is becoming more popular globally. If you look at the different markets around the world, more people are drinking more whiskey than ever. And as the market grows, it sort of drives up the price. That's alongside the fact that you have a finite resource. There's never going to be more bottles from a certain age or distillery than there are right now. So you have that sort of collectability behind it and that scarcity is helping drive the price too. So that's bottles. Now the second category of sort of whiskey investment that people talk about and you might have seen in the news is actually a whole barrel of whiskey, a whole cask of whiskey. So again, this is something that has become really popular in the last five to 10 years. As an industry, it's been around for over a hundred years, mainly because when blenders, so people who make blended whiskey produce the whiskey, they need to have lots of different sources from the different distilleries. So, you know, people have been trading sort of B2B casks for a very long time. In the 90s and 80s, you could buy a cask as an individual, but back then you really needed to be quite closely connected to that whole ecosystem. So you needed to be friends with someone at the distillery or, you know, live in the highlands and be a friend of a friend, but you needed to be quite closely connected. Over the last really 10 years, but it's accelerated really in the last five, that ecosystem has opened up to more and more people. So now internationally, people are buying casks as a means to invest rather than necessarily to drink it all themselves. There's good and bad things about this. Now, what I would say is that some people have made a huge amount of money from buying whiskey casks. You know, if you look at Macallan again, a cask of Macallan in the 90s would cost 3,000 pounds and many of those would now be worth 500,000 pounds. So they've made a huge return on that. Another big headline recently was that they sold a, a cask of Ard Beg a few weeks ago, which went for 16 million pounds for a single barrel. Now, for context, that is twice the value that LVMH paid for the entire distillery back in the 90s. So it's kind of indicative of how that, that cask market has completely exploded. Well, first, it doesn't correlate with any other marketplace. So it doesn't correlate with gold or with the stock market or property or anything else. And as a hedging tool, that's very, very useful. Secondly, again, it has that finite quality to it. You're never going to get more whiskey from a certain year and distillery than has already been produced. So as more of it gets used up for bottling or for blending, there's just less of it around. You know, you don't really get any super old, super inexpensive or cheap casks. They just don't really exist because of that scarcity sort of driving through. So these are all the good things about it. If you're interested in buying whiskey as an investment, firstly, start relatively small. You know, start at a price point where you're really comfortable and you can get to know how the whole thing works. And if you, if you enjoy it, great. You can always buy more bottles or casks or whatever, but you know, get comfortable with it and really get to grips with the whole sort of A to Z of the thing. Do your research, you know, read into it, look into the company who you're buying from, look into the distillery that the cask is made from. If you find a good opportunity, it can be really fun. By all means, give it a while. It's a really, really, well, I I'm biased, but I love it. Um, but as I say, do your homework first. And then if you are interested, by all means, give it a go. Cheers.